So I think every striped bass fisherman likes surface action. I know I do. But what do you do in the summertime when the fish run deep? You might get that surface action first thing in the morning. Um, you know, a day like today being nice and cloudy, you might see a lot of surface action, although we're, we're kind of tucked in around the corner of a point in a cove out of the wind. It's actually about a 10 knot wind out there right now. It's uh, just a little quieter in here. We're just waiting for the current to really get running and I want to ch talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing in this segment. Basically, we're going to be looking for bigger fish and in a situation that on a sunny day where you might be looking for these fish as we progress into the summer. What you, what you want? What you, what you want? Basically what's going to happen is when the water warms up, these fish are going to start to relate to structure, except for these little tiny ones. And they're going to hold on structure because the water's warm. And the bigger the fish, the more energy it's going to require for them to feed. So their energy that they use to get their food or the energy that they get from the food I should say needs to be equal to or greater to than the energy they use to get it. They're not going to waste their energy and they're not going to expend more energy getting food than they take in so the reward has to be greater than the than the work. So what do you do when there's no surface action when the sun gets high or when uh, there's a, a wind like we got wind today or the water's warm and the fish are holding on structure. Well, you go and find that structure, and that's what we're gonna talk about in, in this episode. We're gonna talk about where we find these fish, where we look for them, how we fish for them. There's a couple of different techniques that we use, and hopefully we can get into a little bit bigger fish, and we can show you the difference between uh, how we catch the smaller fish, like in here, where these smaller fish might be cruising because they are a little more energetic, and how we target the bigger fish holding on structure and, and what we look for. So hopefully you enjoy this episode and we catch some fish. So generally, you'll hear me say, always want to retrieve your lure against or across the current. Well, sometimes in the Piscataqua River, the current runs so fast, you can't retrieve a lure like a shad against the current and get it down to where the fish are. So what we do a lot of times is actually fish it with the current. And I'll cast up current and I'll follow the lure back. That gives it a chance to sink. Just keeping my line, just reeling just fast enough to keep my line tight so I can feel a little bit of tension. And every now and then you can give it a rip and follow it down. But you gotta keep your line tight, that's the key. And that gives your lure a chance to sink when we're fishing one of these paddle tail shads. To give it a rip every now and then to give it some vibration. And then just reel down on it. And there you go. This isn't a very big fish, but you can see that it works. Well, it's, it's better than those little micros we've been getting. You won't know how big these fish are in this current. Because we're fishing in five, six knot current right now. So a 24 inch fish in this current, it's gonna feel like a 30 incher, especially on this light rod. This is a new JTX from, uh, from JT Outdoors. These are beautiful rods. Really light action, really fun, so fun. These fish are just a blast on this light tackle. But as you can see, 
when fishing in this heavy current, when, as we get to these bigger fish, this may be too light. Not that we're gonna break it. I'm not gonna break this rod on a fish, but it's gonna take so long to get this fish in. One, you can overfight a fish, which you don't wanna do because you don't wanna exhaust them so they die. They swim away and then they come belly up further down river and you don't even know it. But two, sometimes you gotta get these fish while they're here and if you spend all your time fighting one fish, by the time you get it in, get your line back in the water, fish are gone. So sometimes you have to up your, up your size of your, uh, your rods just a little bit, keep it fun. <laughs> not that that's not fun, but keep it fun. And uh, get these fish into the boat, get your photo get it back in the water. Uh, this might be a little bit better fish than I thought. Now, well, here's a mid 20 inch fish. Just in this heavy current. So they have the current working in their favor. There we go. Grippers are going to make things much easier on you because you can just get a hold of that fish and he can thrash all he wants. So that's that's a good, that's a fun size fish to catch. That's probably a 22 inch fish, 23 inch fish. Really fun to catch. Some bigger ones around with them. We're going to talk a little bit about how to target those bigger fish. I'm going to get this one back in the water and you can see a little bit of sea lice on them. Since that means that they're fresh fish. They just moved in from the open ocean. They haven't been here that long. You see lice moving around, which is also a good sign. Off you go. Thank you, my friend. So I want to talk a little bit about rod size, action, line weight, lure weight. This is the JTX from JT Outdoors. This, these are beautiful rods. It's a six foot 10 rod. You can see that was a blast, but if that was a 33 inch fish, it would have taken me 20 minutes to get that fish, to land that fish and get it to the boat. So we could be halfway down river. There could be a school of fish in here that's feeding right now while I'm talking, and we'd be missing a lot of those fish because I spent so much time fighting them. The other thing you want to be careful of is, like I said, you don't want to overfight these fish because you're going to exhaust them. The bigger they are, the harder it is for them to recover. So you really want to get them in as fast as you can. You want to enjoy it, uh, but you don't want to overfight them. So in a case like this, you can move up to maybe a seven foot medium heavy as opposed to a medium. Um, this is actually a uh, medium light. Vertical jigging, if we were to vertical jig, I would move up to something like this. Um, Travala jig spinning rod. This is a really light looking rod. It's a little bit on the stout side. But what you can't see is the ability of this rod to fish a heavy lure. This rod is rated for up to a six ounce lure, which is uh, pretty pretty amazing for the size of this rod. It's a really light rod, but you can cast with it if you want. Really good for vertical jigging. This is a three and a half ounce Daddy Mac Trophy uh, mackerel. Great for that vertical jig bite. You can cast it as well. Uh, we may try a little bit of that later on here after we catch a few more fish. So make sure you're using the right gear. You want to make sure it's matched to your lure and line weight, but you also want to make sure that it's matched to the fish that you're catching in the conditions like the current that you're catching them in so you can get those fish in and get back at it. Here we go. Oh, there's some nice fish under us right now. Cast this up ahead of us. We just marked a few. Nice fish holding on the leading edge of the structure. I'm gonna cast it up current. I'm just gonna let that shad sink. Give it a rip every now and again. Try to get one of those fish to come off that hump. Grab my jig. Situation like this might be a good chance to vertical jig. You can vertical jig with these shad, but sometimes it takes a long time to get it down there. I just had a good whack. 
They don't sink all that fast, so it can take a while to get down there. So if you're using a shad body on a weighted head, they get torn up pretty, pretty good, pretty easily, and they won't stay on the hook very well. One way you can get a lot more life out of them is to bite about an inch, three quarters of an inch off of it, hook it back on. You'll catch another fish or two on it before they tear it up again, depending on how bad it was torn up when you moved it. Makes it a little bit shorter, but one or two more fish out of it is going to be a bonus. What you'll find a lot of times in these places like these, this structure and all of this, uh, these rips that we're fishing, is these fish will just show up here at a certain tide, at a certain time of the tide, all at once, just all of a sudden. There's nothing here and then they're here. And it'll pretty much be like that all the time. Problem is, the time of the tide changes every day by 53 minutes or an hour for keep it simple to about an hour each day later so you know if two hours after high tide is really good at one particular spot at six o'clock in the morning well three days from then it's going to be two hours after high tide at nine o'clock in the morning roughly and then the sun might be higher in the sky so that spot might not be good anymore so it, it, time of day has a lot to do with it one of the biggest things to remember when you head back up to make your drift again is you don't want to run right up over the middle of those fish because there's something that's keeping them in that location. And if you run right up over them, you're going to spook them out of there and blow the fish out. You want to go around your spot, up to the head of your drift, and drift back down through it. That's going to give you many more opportunities to drift that spot without blowing those fish on. So we're going to get back up there and I'm going to see if I can't catch a few more of these. So because I know this area well, I know that these fish are going to show up here any moment. So even though there's not a whole lot going on, you see a lot of boats coming and going. Most of these people are looking for birds. They don't see bird activity. They just move on. I know these fish are going to be here. So I'm going to stay because I want to be here when they show up. And I'm just going to keep making some drifts over these ledges. Ledges aren't hard to find, especially with this amount of current. You just look for those boils. Uh, any place that the, you see the, the little uh, foamy, rough water, comes from calm to rough water, boiling water, that's caused by current moving over a piece of structure, a ledge or a boulder or something like that. Something is disrupting that current. When it comes up shallower, all the current flows over it, it begins to boil. The fish are going to use that either the structure or the, the rips and boils to ambush prey. We're just going to keep drifting over and wait for them to show up and we're going to keep watching this water and eventually this, we're going to see some splashes. We're going to start marking some fish on the fish finder. We're going to catch a bunch of fish. This one. Oh, he whaled it too. Vertical jigging him off this hump. Oh no. Ah, oh, that was a nice fish. Uh, that's fishing. Bummer. What you want? What you want? What you want?